down, he's been thinking a banana broccoli shake thing, and I'm an Oscar Mayer week. You live up top, you live caught toes with what he wants, when he wants, how he wants. Your other choice, you come down here, maybe start with that. So, Lone Rider here, and um, that was a scene from a pretty darn good movie uh, that actually, well, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, I honestly think it predicted the so-called Green New Deal. Uh, maybe not in as many words, but in the movie Demolition Man, which features uh, Sylvester Stallone, uh, Wesley Snipes, Sandra Bullock, and let's not forget Dennis Leary as an anarchist living in the sewers and eating rat burgers. Um, the main character, John Spartan, portrayed by Sylvester Stallone, uh, is frozen in a cryogenic chamber as punishment for a crime he didn't commit, of course. Uh, and he's then later defrosted in the future, where the world has turned, in the words of um, Wesley Snipes' character, who plays the villain, or one of the villains, I should say, um, into, quote, a Brady Bunch version of its former self, unquote. Um, everything that's bad for you is illegal. Uh, the government regulates uh, speech uh, and actually fines people uh, if they curse. Um, the, the cars are all electric. Uh, nobody has uh, firearms anymore. Um Nobody has any kind of real self-assertiveness or, or personality because the, well, the government does everything for them. And they've been sort of socially engineered to uh, be meek and, and sort of do what they're told. Uh, and so when Wesley Snipes' character emerges uh, and he starts wreaking havoc as the villain, well, there's nobody who can really deal with him because as... Uh, Wesley Snipes himself later says uh, the world is now run by quote a bunch of robed sissies unquote so of course what happens they defrost um, John Spartan uh, Sylvester Stallone who's a cop from our present day and they send him after this guy and he teams up with a, a young cop played by Sandra Bullock and um, in the process they of course they meet Dennis Leary who's an anarchist living in the sewers um, and they uncover a plot that leads all the way back to Dr. Raymond Cocteau, who's the leader of this new futuristic society that's taken over. Wait for it. California. Yeah. Now, uh, even back in the early 1990s when this movie came out, um, I think a lot of us could have seen some of this coming. I, I actually remember satirizing... Uh, some of the similar themes in an uh, essay I wrote when I was in high school uh, back in the early 90s. Uh, but Demolition Man, although it wasn't the first and wasn't the only, uh, is the one that has, I think, captured the essence of satirizing some of these elements in, in a manner that's not only timeless, but nowadays incredibly timely. Right? Uh, for example... When the character of John Spartan is defrosted, uh, he asks for a burger. He's hungry. He's been, you know, in, in cryogenesis for a long time. So he's defrosted and he's, he's man, I'm starving. Uh, can I have a burger? And he's probably told that, uh, no, burgers are illegal. Uh, along with um, caffeine and, and loud music and just about everything uh, that we all take for granted in our society that we just kind of figure, well, you know, some of this stuff may not be good for you, but it's, um, your choice as a free human being, you know, um, in the future of demolition, man, they no longer have that choice. Uh, the government's kind of made it for you. And you could argue that this leads to a healthier, more orderly world. Um, and while health and order certainly are virtues, um, I would argue they're not the only ones, right? There's, the ability to live your life as you see fit. There's the ability to have uh, volition, have control over your own actions. And um, at a certain point, if you lose enough of that um, and the, the influence of others becomes too strong, you're not free anymore, right? Um, and, well, some influence of others, such as uh, peer pressure and, and social forces, uh, people can choose to ignore when the influence of others is uh, enforced at the well, at the point of a gun, essentially, by the government, uh, you know, via legalized compulsion, um, you don't have a choice. Like when, when a law is passed or 
um, the bill is approved by Congress and signed into law, you can't choose to say, well, you know, I, I really don't feel like participating in that. It's the law now. If you don't participate, you will be, there will be legal sanctions directed against you, whether you get fined, whether you get, you know, put in jail, whatever. Something bad will happen to you because you're refusing to go along with it. And um, that brings us to how Demolition Man predicted the Green New Deal. Uh, a lot of people are talking about the Green New Deal in, in, in terms of uh, its supposed aspirations for saving the environment and preventing uh, uh, catastrophic uh, uh, climate change. Now, leaving aside the issue of whether or not uh, climate change would be catastrophic, uh, there's the question of whatever you think of that, in order to accomplish or even try to accomplish, because some of the things that they propose really, I think, would be just not feasible. Um, some of them are downright ridiculous. Uh, but in order to even try and accomplish many of the things that are in the Green New Deal, you would have to essentially establish a top-down command economy and virtually total, total government control over everything. Um, uh, one of the things that sticks out is... Uh, you know, automobiles, uh, all electric cars. Now, there's nothing wrong necessarily with electric cars, but uh, what about all the people who don't choose to drive them? They'd rather drive their regular car. Well, you can't, right? You're gonna you're gonna get in trouble if you do that. There's gonna be a, a legal penalty. Um, uh, one of the goals is elimination of uh, beef, right? Elimination of red meat. Well, why? Well, in, in the movie Demolition Man, it was because uh, it's bad for your health. Uh, if you have too much of it. In the um, real-life Green New Deal, which I still find hard to believe is real life, but whatever, um, the, propo the proposal seems to be based on the idea that large-scale uh, beef production in terms of farming and agriculture is bad for the environment. But either way, the end result is the same. If you want a burger, you're going to have to go down with Dennis Leary into the sewers and uh, live underground and eat rat burgers. Or maybe I guess you could go to a high-end speakeasy type place and just pay like sixty dollars a pop for, you know, like expensive, you know, black market Kobe beef or something. But the the irony here, I guess, is that this movie, which I don't believe was intended, by the way, as political satire, a lot of people uh, who are of a more libertarian mindset will talk about Demolition Man as if it's. Um, in addition to be, being a silly movie that kind of mixed up genres, being an action movie, a comedy spoof of an action movie, uh, sort of a sci-fi movie, sort of a dystopian future movie, um, all these things rolled into one. Uh, a lot of people will talk about it as if it was this deliberate biting satire of the far left and some of its ideas. I don't believe it was ever intended to be that. I think it was more a case of people who were making the movie looked at things that were sort of an issue back then and said, what if we take these and we just project them into the future to the point where they become totally absurd? Just for the entertainment value. Um, that said, it is ironic that the movie basically predicted many of the specifics of the Great New Deal. It's not that, well, some of the things Ocasio, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and all these other New Democrats are talking about are similar to things in Demolition Man, it's that some of the proposals are actually identical. The reasons given may be different, like with the, the elimination of beef, but the, the actual proposals, many of them are identical. And this becomes even more impressive when you realize that it's very unlikely the media was done as a deliberate satire of the left both in terms of many people back in the early 90s weren't even thinking that way, and in terms of the fact that many of the people in Hollywood tend to be more to the left in their politics, so why would they satirize their own beliefs? I honestly think it was more just a case of taking things that were sort of being discussed back then, maybe just hypothetically, and projecting them into the future uh, to the point of absurdity for entertainment value. So the fact that it's actually an unintended satire, as it were, and nevertheless, it more or less accurately predicted what's happening here. I think is totally... I'd say it's totally cool from the perspective of somebody who's a fan of the movie. But it's also kind of scary, right? If 
if if you had told me in the early 90s when I saw this movie, when I was in my young teenage years, when I first saw this, or even five, five three years ago, whatever it was, when I, when I rewatched it for the first time, uh, I've, I've seen it several times since. If you had told me, even three, five years ago, that, that many of the proposals that actually were in the movie Demolition Man would be being proposed by the real-life Congress, like the real Congress in real life, um, I would say, nah, man, you know, you, you better lay off the hashish. I don't know what you're smoking or what you're, <laughs> you know, lay off the drugs, man. There's no way that's going to happen. Uh, I would have been wrong, right? I would have been wrong. And certainly if you had told me back in the 1990s, you know, like uh, 94 or whenever it was, uh, you know, the movie came out in the early 90s. I, I, if you had gone back to when the movie came out, when I first saw it and said to me, uh, you know what? This is going to be a thing in like 20 years. I would have said, nah, man, no way. No way, Jose. And yet, uh, here we go. <laughs> and it, it's funny because uh, if the if the society and the paradigm for the society in terms of the relationship between the government and the citizen, which Sylvester Stallone's character kind of sums up as this fascism crap, um, if that's actually the same type of scenario that would be created by the Green New Deal. And in fact, some of the specific proposals in the Green New Deal are essentially identical, literally identical to some of the proposals that were enacted in the future of the silly movie. Then the question becomes, what does that make the supporters of the Green New Deal, the people who are pushing it and its progenitors? Um, well, we can look at where in the movie the progenitors of these proposals in this futuristic society set. Uh, the main one, Dr. Raymond Cocteau, who created the whole setup, actually turns out to be the big villain of the movie. Yes, Wesley Snipes is uh, the henchman, essentially, um, and his you know right-hand man, as it were, uh, although he later turns around and, uh, spoiler, kills him. Well, no, he has him killed. Actually, he says something like, I can't kill you. And then he goes, he turns to his buddy and he goes, kill him. But, but yeah, uh, Wesley Snipes initially works for the villain. But the real villain, in addition to Wesley Snipes, is the head of the entire society. The supposedly benevolent and generous Dr. Raymond Cocteau, who got everybody to trade their freedom and their self-determination for creature comforts. And a world where people for some bizarre reason, enjoy singing television advertisement jingles. And the irony is, uh, Wesley Snipes' character in this movie completely sums it up. He says, he's, he's looking at Dr. Cocteau and he says, that's who you remind me of, an evil Mr. Rogers. I, I can't think of a more perfect line. I mean, every time I watch the movie and I hear that, I'm like, oh, man, that just hits the nail on the head. And, well, if Dr. Raymond Cocteau, who created this new society with all its proposals, some of which are identical to the Green New Deal, and the social relationship in which, between the government and the citizen, is very much like that which would be necessitated by the Green New Deal, well, then where are the progenitors of the Green New Deal but a bunch of evil Mr. Rogerses who essentially want to rule the neighborhood with an iron fist and insinuate their control into every aspect of your life? And I guess one of the enduring mysteries of, it, of, of, of this movie, of Demolition Man, is going to be how did a silly movie, which wasn't really a, a serious action movie, wasn't really a comedy wasn't really a science fiction movie, wasn't really a dystopian future movie, but combined elements of all of these things to come out with uh, something that has stood the test of time and still holds up today. Um, and it is, in fact, even more timely today than when it was made. How did something like this so accurately predict our future when it probably was never intended to be a political satire in the first place? That's a good question, right? 
that's almost as good a question as what the three seashells are for. And just like nobody really knows the answer to that, um, I'm not sure anybody can say how this random mixture of ingredients that came up with a really awesome and fun, entertaining movie that also makes you think a little bit, um, surprisingly enough, how did this so accurately predict where we are at this point in time in 2019? Uh, again, it, when this movie came out, when I first saw it, or even three, four, five years ago, whenever it was I, I rewatched it, uh, if you had said to me, oh yeah, all those things in Demolition Man that were played for laughs, they're going to be proposed in Congress. That's going to be a thing. I would have said, like the real Congress? <laughs> Again, what are you, what drugs are you on? I want some. No, I, 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 don't, I don't want drugs. But uh, in all seriousness, if you, if you are going to tell me that, I'd be like, no way, no way. And yet, yes way, right? That's what we're living now. We're living in the, the real life version of the, the, the setup in the movie Demolition Man. What was played for laughs as a spoof, as a, a, a silly thing, as a, a way to sort of maybe take digs at, at current trends by projecting them into the future to the point where they became absurdities. Well, now those absurdities have become realities. And so uh, here we are. Uh, uh, you know, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is Raymond Cocteau. I, I guess the question then becomes, who's Dennis Leary, right? I don't know. Just like I don't know what the three seashells are for. Uh, but, um, you know, it, it is kind of funny that this movie that that was never, I don't, I, I think, never intended to be a serious political satire, uh, just straight up predicted many elements of the Green New Deal, like literally word for word. Not, not so much. Well, some of the proposals are kind of similar. Or I can see a parallel there. Nope, many of the things are exactly the same from the electric cars. To the you know nobody has guns anymore. To uh, the 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 uh, sort of uh, social justice paradigm. To the uh, um, you know nanny state aspects. To the well the burgers being outlawed, right? Um, and uh, it, it is kind of, it, it, man. It's just it's just uncanny, right? Um, so either the people who wrote this movie really knew more. Maybe they had access to a time machine. Right? No, I don't know. But um, uh, in all seriousness, it, it's just a bizarro coincidence. Either that or we're like living in bizarro world. I don't know. But for some strange reason, what in the early 1990s was played for laughs in a silly, silly movie has now become the reality in which we're living. And um, if, if you don't think that's a little strange, and maybe should be caused to take a step back and say, well, hold on, is, should we be doing this? Um, then, I, I don't know. I mean, I would think it would seem strange to anybody to, to have, you know, something that, you know, w was intended as a, as, a, as a joke. Now people are debating it in the halls of Congress. It's like, what? <laughs> Seriously? Uh, are you hepped up on goofballs? Uh, apparently. Um, so that's, you know, if you haven't seen the movie Demolition Man, go see it. It's a good movie in and of itself. But if you see it and then you, you think about the so-called Green New Deal and the specifics therein and the, you know, the parallels and how things overlap, you're going to be sitting there scratching your head wondering, how the hell did somebody 20 years ago see this coming? Seriously. And and I like I said, I don't have the answer to you for that any more than I know how the three seashells work. But I can tell you this. Um, the fact that, you know, a quarter century ago, uh, people in Hollywood were playing these things up as, as a joke um, does really make me wonder how we got from there to here in the first place, right? So, Lone Rider out and uh, be well. Demolition Man joke. They say that in the movie. Stay cool.